Hey, everybody, this is Rachel Gardner, and you are listening to Spiritual Musings of a Popcorn Brain. Hey, friends. So right now we are going through a season that I'm calling God Stories. And these are friends, some I've known a long time, some I haven't known quite as long. Some are very personal friends, some are church friends. They are all great people, and they all know Jesus personally, and they all have a story to tell you about a way that He spoke directly into their lives. And my purpose in doing this is so that any of you who think that you have never had that experience, or you know that you've never had that experience to hear directly from from God, from Jesus, I want you to start to recognize all the ways in which he might talk to you so that if he has talked to you and you didn't recognize his voice, you'll start to hear it. And if he's never talked to you and you want that, then you can ask him and when he does, you will recognize his voice. I hope that you are encouraged. This week, we finish up Eric Beach's story. I hope you are encouraged. So, I don't know how I got this idea, but one, one day, she and I were at odds, and we were, and uh, I met with our pastor, and I was talking to him about some of this stuff that was going on, the, the family pastor. He said, Eric, I think you need to take a break. From from leading the college group, I mm-hmm. think you and Becky need to take some time, mm-hmm. figure this out. Mm-hmm. Great advice, and I will tell you this: I would any you know. There's a proverb that says that that arrows from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy, yeah. and he was a true friend at that time. And I wish more pastors would care enough to mm-hmm. ask folks to take a break and get yeah. things right. Then, because the ministry is more important a lot of times than the relationships and the people. So it was one of the best things he could have done. So I took Becky to dinner that one night. And I said, hey, Becky is my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys didn't pick up on that. Um, Becky's my wife. And, and uh, I said, Becky, what would, I just asked her, I said, what would you, if, if you could fix, adjust, change three things, what would, what would you what would you adjust? What would you, what would you work on? What would you have me work on? It was the first time I'd ever asked her anything like that. Cause up, up until then I was trying to do things for her mm-hmm. because there was a subtle arrogance that I knew what we needed. Mm-hmm. It was an important moment because for probably about an hour and a half, she was able to give list after list after list. I said, I can't do list. Let's pick three. (laughs) And that really started the road of she and I learning how to listen to each other and love each other and make prayers and changes to our life that were not based on what we thought God wanted, Mm -hmm. but were actually what was loving to the other person. So God said, I want you to learn how to submit. And then he gives me this call to have compassion. And so learning how to submit not only to him and his word, right? Not only to his lordship when I like it, but now also submit to another sister in Christ, the most important sister in Christ, (laughs) which is my wife. And learning how to submit my will for the sake of her sanctification and for the sake of the sanctification of our marriage, Mm -hmm. for the sake of the sanctification of my heart. Because if I'm engaging in loving and caring for her, my mind is engaging in obeying Christ, not engaging in lust or something else. It's really important. So that began a process of cooperating with God in our marriage. And so here, here, there's two moments that began a process. Mm -hmm. So for the third stage of this story, if you will, so pan forward, maybe about, 
uh, seven years. Seven years. We weren't going to that church anymore. We, we had gone to, started to go to a different church. It was the first Sunday we went to that other church. I had worked really hard on trying to love her. It was imperfect. It was broken. It, it, but but it, was, it was consistent. We were consistently working on loving each other different. And I'll never forget that moment in worship. It was a worship time. At that particular church, they turned the lights down a little lower. They wanted to create an ambience. And uh, I had done ambient worship, and it wasn't the ambience of it. it I stood in the back. And uh, again, it was a whisper, it was, but it was clear. And, he, and I, was, I was just adoring God at that moment. And he whispered in my heart, now, just one word again, now. Mm-hmm. And the love of God flooded, literally flooded in. I was on my knees. I was on my face. I cry. I was a, I was a heap of crying tears, just tears of gratitude. It was it was literal gratitude because when you when you know the peace and the joy of the Lord, mm-hmm. for him to say I'm pulling that feeling back mm-hmm. um for him to give you that feeling again, it, it's very tender. It's very much mm-hmm. like uh, orchard or where you have trees growing and whatever, and you can tell the effect of there's not rain, there's not a lot of water. It's the trees, you see that effect. But the moment that water's there again, it's like you, everything blooms like in the desert just immediately. And that's that's how it felt in my heart. The word of God had become something I had, I had to work really, really hard on. And all of a sudden I was able to enjoy his word again and read it a little, for a little more closely. And it was nice. It was a good zone. And I'm very grateful for that because he taught me how to submit. So then where does the submit to his will when I don't want to come in? Oddly enough, that was about 10 years later. Mm-hmm. It happened just recently. Um, and I continued with the company that I continued in and went through a time with that company that, um, was, was probably the hardest commitment to try to be excellent in a situation where you're unappreciated. Mm -hmm. Trying to work and give, you know, when it says do everything for the glory of God. In Colossians, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Tried, was trying so hard to do that. It was not an environment where doing your best resulted in the fruit of others being grateful for your labor. So during that period of time, my stress life and emotion life is cranking up. It's, 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 it's elevating to a point where I actually told my wife, I said, if something doesn't change, this is going to kill me probably. Mm-hmm. It felt like that. And so, and, and for that decade, we had been, that, that decade in between, going to this one church and the other, we had moved to Virginia, then we moved to Tennessee. Um, And during that time of going to Virginia and Tennessee, we had become uh, lead elders, deacons, servers in the church. It was much more healthy than it had been previously because it was, the marriage comes before that, right? Mm -hmm. That was in the right order now. But we had trained each other in the family and we had worked really hard in the family to say, when you go to church, you're going to church to give. You're going to church to love others. You're going to church to serve. We fold chairs. We listen. We, we do hospitality. We make coffee. We, whatever needs to be done in whatever church we're in, we're going to be givers. And, um, and, and really working out that consumer, I'm a taker when I go to church. No, I'm, I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to let God use me in the hearts of others when I walk in the doors 
when I walk out of the doors, when we go to dinner, when we go to, when they come, others come in our home. In doing so, church became a kind of a one way thing. I'm going to experience Christ when I open my Bible or I'm praying with my wife or whatever. When I go to the church, I'm, I'm giving out. So during this time of stress, something very interesting happened. I didn't have anything to give. Mm-hmm. When I went to church, what I really wanted to do was crawl in a corner and curl up in the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, uh, but I'm with the body of Christ. And there are people that need me. But one of the pastors in one of our conversations said, hey, you know what? Church is f- one of the reasons God designed church. Mm-hmm. Is he designed church so that you could be around each other. And when you're around each other, he intended you to minister from the Holy Spirit to each other mm-hmm. through his word. And so that's a gift of God is actually, and I, and I listened to him and I, and, and I did kind of like I did when God said submit. I went, I don't believe that. I don't believe that I'm to receive from other people. I believe I'm there to give. I don't want to be a consumer. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was in that moment of realizing I have trouble receiving from others in the body of Christ. That that full circle of submission closed the loop in my heart. So here now the Lord has taken almost 20 years to weave that message of what submission looks like. And I realized I only submit to God when I agree. And so at that moment I said, Lord, I submit to you even though I don't understand how to receive from other people in the body of Christ. And it was an important moment because the next year was going to be, was the the hardest emotional year of my life. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest emotional year of my wife's life. Mm -hmm. It was a year where we experienced heavy, deep, searing loss Mm -hmm. for the next year. Heavy grief. Um, grief that was, that's of the level of having a divorce. Um, and had we not submitted to the body of Christ to pray for us, to give grace, to love and to support, I don't know that we would have made it very well. But by closing that loop, something happened in the way I study God's word too. Because I've started asking scripture. As I'm reading the scripture, I'm talking to the Lord. Lord, what does this say? Not just what does this say, and I get excited about it now. What does this say, God, and what do you want me to do about it? Mm-hmm. What do you want me to do that I don't agree? Mm-hmm. Um, and the learning has changed from his word. And so I hope you can see, and this is, like I said, this is a long haul process. Here is a father that said, I want you to learn to submit. <laughs> And here's a son that said, I know what that looks like. (laughs) And I had no clue. I had no clue how much my perspective on others, how I submit to his word for the sake of others, how I submit to love, even if it's different than my opinion, how I submit to receive from others, even when I would like to be the one to give. That submission is is more than just being a dumb-minded, right? Mm-hmm. A, a dumb-minded bower to just whatever. It's it's a it's actually thoughtful. It's a thoughtfulness of the beauty that God has on so many levels of relationship. And in doing so, what it does is elevates love. And so that's my story. That's, that's, it's, 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 a, it's a 30, 40 year story of 
growing in Christ, and um, thank God he's not done. So when you said on the level of divorce, not that you and your wife were going through a divorce. Correct. But that the kind of anguish that someone feels going through divorce, you had life situations that were that kind of tearing yes. and difficult. The, the, the two situations were my wife's closest other relative, who is her brother, who, who was her best friend other than me. Um, he died suddenly without notice, without ailment. And I lost my job, and that was within two weeks of each other. My 27-year job that I was desperately trying to hold on to and be a good servant of. And, you know, I, I had, I was emotionally committed to submit myself to God and serving them. And by losing, in, in this process of losing both of those in, within two weeks of each other, it was that level of searing loss. And then, and then as a result of that, that is, that brought you to a place of the need of others, which God opened your eyes to. Is that kind of, that was kind of that end of that chapter in a way? The feeling of the loss didn't do it. Correct. It was actually the pastor suggesting, actually Tell, telling this small group community of we were talking about different aspects of discipleship and he was elevating the value of the church mm-hmm. it was just that conversation and when he said that well, I was already in need but my wife and I were just trying to go to God on our own mm-hmm. find God find the lifeline find the hope so find... you found the body became real in meeting needs that you hadn't really looked that's, to the body for that's right yeah. gotcha. because because my role in my mind my role was to serve the church right. not to receive from the church and I needed exactly what that pastor had to say yeah because relationships are two-way, not one way. That's right. Yeah. And and what's beautiful about that is I think a lot of times we can we can get in our mind that we need the word from God to our heart mm-hmm. in whispers or, or events or whatever in order for him to teach us. Mm-hmm. But I needed what that pastor had to say. That was God's word to me because it opened up an avenue of grace to my heart Mm -hmm. that I had closed the gate to. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize that God wanted to minister to me and my wife through the church. Mm -hmm. That sounds silly. No, I understand. Um, But, but because we had closed that off because our role was a different thing. Mm -hmm. So, the beauty of it was God was teaching me submission, but he was also introducing us to receive his grace, to receive from his spirit a different way. Mm-hmm. So what's nice about that is, is when you go to church, then you're not just a talker, you're also a listener. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. So it's full circle. Well, thank you so much for sharing mm-hmm. with us today and yes. taking us through that kind of epic look at these stages it was really meaningful to hear your story and we hope that this really um, is something that touches those who listen and maybe someone else is hearing things similar to what you were hearing and this will touch their heart or help them to realize something that that God can then use in their lives to enlighten them to some things that maybe he wants them to hear so thank you so much Eric for sharing thank you If you find this podcast encouraging, then please follow or subscribe. And if this specific episode was meaningful to you, please share it with somebody so that they can be encouraged too. And I also want to let you know that I have another podcast where it's just me doing my daily Bible reading from a one-year Bible. So if you would like to join me in that quiet time each day, then I have the link for that also in the bottom of this episode, and it's called Scripture for Life.